Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and unicorns. Welcome to part two of basically me ranting about chromatic aberration. Well, and we will look how to recreate this effect in Photoshop so we can understand it and maybe write a shader. Yeah, about that. In my last video, I bashed on uh, Unity for their image effect of chromatic aberration, which is that sucked and was completely wrong. And it still sucks, it is kinda wrong, but uh, Mr. Nobody331 wrote in the comments and also Venom uh, added uh, to it. Uh, yeah, the new post processing stack in Unity, it's something I have completely overlooked. And yeah, I, I just checked it out. It's very easy. You just go to the Unity store and then just add it to your account where you can download it to your Unity project. And once you're there, you just create a new post effect. And on your camera, you add a new post effects behavior and just drag the thing on. And yeah, you can start getting wild with the post effects stack. And this one also has chromatic aberration in it. And guess what? It's the real deal. It looks way better uh, than the previous one. And it's pretty much uh, the thing that I wanted uh, to show you of how to code a shader. Nevertheless, I want to show you how to do it in Photoshop. Uh, just to get the principles right of what this effect is, is doing and how you can recreate it. All right, uh, before we can recreate something, we should analyze it. And I have here again, this great example from uh, Wikipedia. So I have here my channels open because we will look at it uh, per channel. And so if we just look at the red channel, yeah, this one here looks a little bit blurry, but nothing special about this. But if I switch now to the green channel, and then the blue channel, and if I switch uh, between all those, you see it looks like um, there's some kind of movement in the image, apart from those horrible JPEG artifacts in the channels. So basically what we could do is just scale the image up channel by channel and see how this works. Or we even apply some uh, spherical uh, and lens correction transformation distortions. So I have here another image. So yeah, if we look at it, of course, it looks artificial. And if we look here at the fringes, of course, there is no chromatic aberration going on. And yeah, to get some chromatic aberration going on, we're going to work on the channels individually. As we've seen uh, with this one here, I'm going to leave red untouched and only work on the green and the blue channels. Because red is where it already should be and green and red will get the treatment. So I'm selecting now here in this image the green channel and in Photoshop I can apply some kind of lens distortion effects very easily by just going to the camera raw filter. And there I have this little menu which goes lens corrections. Of course you want to correct the lens but you can also use it to artificially distort a lens and this is what I'm going to do now. And for the blue channel I just yeah, just make it a little bit spherical and we use, let's use a value of minus two. So just a little bit, which should be plenty. And for the blue channel, we use the same filter, but with an intensity of, let's say minus four. This will be pretty intense, uh, but just so that we can see it. So if I switch now back to RGB, um, we already have some kind of, yeah, chromatic aberration going on. Although if you compare it now uh, with, of course, how, how this looked, this one is blurry in either channel. So it has this nice rainbow gradient. While in this image here that we artificially blurred, uh, we can clearly see that I've treated the channels individually. And if you look at the channels separately, they appear pretty sharp. So what we need to do and what also is happening in real lenses with this kind of terrible chromatic aberration, everything gets blurrier towards the edges. To do this, we have also a very neat and very simple effect. And this is here on the blur and radial blur. Uh, be sure not to use the spin, but the zoom and also set the quality to best. 10 is way too high. Let's try two. If we compare this now, what I have here with this one, we are pretty close to the real thing. Yes, and this is basically how you do this in Photoshop. Uh, when I'm working on some kind of visual effects, I always prototype them in Photoshop or After Effects because, 
yeah, it, it allows me to learn how an effect is constructed, how it should work, how to set it up without actually uh, uh, the amount of coding that's involved when you're just trying things out. So first I prototype how it should work in Photoshop and once I have the understanding, I get into the nitty gritty of coding. So as I said, what's in Unity now with this uh, post effect stack is better than anything that I could show you. So I'm not going to show you how my shader looks like because probably in comparison, it's ugly. It's very expensive in terms of performance and you probably won't learn much from it because I'm not a programmer and this is just my first or second pixel shader I came up with. So yeah, I hope that's okay for you. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this still was useful to you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.